Welcome back to video 9.2, where we'll extend on our discussion of that theme, extremism in defense of liberty, by focusing on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and enduring challenges in the Middle East. This section is designed to provide an overview and some historical background for you of that conflict as a setup, as foundation for your viewing of the feature film Paradise Now on your own after this video lecture. So I'm going to click over to again to our PowerPoint presentation. And remind you that we are investigating these key themes in tonight's class together. Now we'll focus a little bit on the Arab-Israeli conflict. This is a very timely subject, it's a very important topic, and it certainly provides an example of the challenges of extremism and views in a complex, conflictual setting. Terrorism, Middle East conflict, and Israel-Palestine are a centerpiece then for us to investigate key questions and themes from the earlier half of our material. Specifically, the Israeli-Palestinian struggle, which has gone on for nearly 70 uh, years, has been a powerful and important flashpoint, an example of how ideologies on the right and left and deep beliefs and abiding commitments have helped fuel a long-standing conflict. I'll start off by stating the obvious. Many people feel very strongly about this conflict and it has generated a wide range of opinions and perspectives. <laughs> Easy examples of some of those contrasting perspectives come from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He is an arch conservative leader of Israel who uh, up until very recently was a very powerful voice in shaping Israeli politics and foreign policy. Netanyahu repeatedly challenged the Palestinians and their claims on territories and legitimacy and participation in the Israeli political process versus the views of Palestinian leaders, including people like Mahmoud Abbas, the president of Palestine, who has argued for the creation of a Palestinian state and for the legitimacy of the Palestinian cause. You can find many filmic examples of these strong views by searching YouTube. For example, a Netanyahu speech, almost any Netanyahu speech, will capture the spirit of Israeli conservative ideology versus speeches and statements, excerpts and interviews you can find, video recorded with Mahmoud Abbas and other leaders of the Palestinian cause and interest. But you know, political scientists and historians have also tried to grapple with these complex challenges and offer up challenge and offer up their own perspectives. One of those that I found really interesting and, you know, that kind of pushes us to think critically about this question comes from political scientist John Stossinger, who in 2014 wrote, historical tragedies do not arise from encounters in which the right classes clashes with wrong. Rather, they occur when the right clashes with right. Stossinger and others help us to recognize that this is a multidimensional and complex challenge and that political scientists have been interested in investigating it for some time. There are so many filmic examples, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, that give us perspective on this challenge. But one of the very powerful feature films that I've seen in recent years uh, is Steven Spielberg's Munich. That 2006 feature film is a wonderful, powerful, critical investigation of contesting idea contested ideologies and deep questions about extremism in defense of liberty, by the way, on both sides and in great depth. This is dealt with very well in Munich. You could find film clips available on YouTube, or perhaps this would be a feature film that you would find very powerful and engaging. It pushes us to think critically about questions of extremism in defense of liberty. What I want to do over the next couple of minutes then is provide you a little bit of historical context and background information associated with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I'll jokingly say that I'm going to try to provide an overview for you of this conflict in eight or 10 minutes only, which is a joke because this is such a deep and abiding, important, complex, and multidimensional challenge about which many books have been written, about which many political careers have been made, about which entire classes are taught at the College of Worcester. But I do want to provide just a bit of historical setup for you, a bit of context, help us understand what we're dealing with in this conflict and challenge. 
perhaps an easy way or a simplified way to think about the Israeli-Palestinian challenge is this way, that in Israel and Palestine today, the peoples of the Israelis and Palestinians who constitute distinct nations with competing aspirations vie for statehood and often vie for statehood and territorial control in the exact same space the same physical space in which two or more specific groups with committed ideologies and deep foundations believe in the legitimacy of their right to exist, to govern, and to gain access to territory and resources. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict, two peoples, one land, has been manifest for more than a hundred years. I'll mention, though, that easy touchstone history points would include when the United Nations established a plan for Palestine, named at the time in the 1940s, for the region of Palestine in the eastern region, eastern part of the Mediterranean, to be divided up effectively between groups that were primarily Jewish and primarily Arab Palestinians. The United Nations Partition Plan, advanced in 1947, was one effort to provide a settlement or a plan for operation and moving forward for Israel and Palestine. Note the date, 1947, in the immediate aftermath of the Holocaust and World War II, a United Nations effort sponsored by many Western governments to establish a homeland for Jewish peoples, including many who had emigrated out of Europe during the Holocaust, seeking then to establish a new plan moving forward. The 1947 UN partition plan was part of the historical march toward what we see today. Created by the UN mandate in 1947, with Jewish peoples flocking into the region and establishing homesteads and territorial control. Soon thereafter though, the conflict as the situation became much more conflictual. With the declaration by Jews living in Palestine in this region of an independent Israeli state. Israel declares its independence in May 1948. The reaction of the international community is challenge and condemnation from many different quarters. Many of the neighboring Arab states immediately began to challenge Israel's claim for independence. And in fact, in 1948 and on into 1949, launched wars against Israel over the legitimacy of its newfound existence. Conflicts between Israelis and the Palestinians, conflict between Israel and its Palestinian neighbors continued in all of the decades that followed you see a pattern of almost constant or enduring conflict between Israel and its neighbors, its Palestinians, as well as Arab states, in dates between 1947 and 49, in the 1956 Suez Crisis, and the 1967 war, the 1973 Yom Kippur War, the 1982 challenge and conflict between Israel and Lebanon, the Iraq-Iranian War from 1980 to 1988, drew Israeli interests in at the same time. So did the Persian Gulf War of 1990-91. Conflict in 2003 against its immediate neighbors and with the Palestinians during intifadas, in 2006, in 2008, in 2012, and the list goes on. It's less important that you memorize all of these dates and rather to capture the whole picture of this slide, right? And that is that we see a situation where Israelis have struggled against Palestinians nearby and Arab state interests in the entire region over the very legitimacy and right for them to exist. This continued in 2014 and on into contemporary challenges in occupied territories. The net result of this though, is that Israel established itself and tried to gain control and consolidate its territorial authority and existence in the highlighted regions at the center of this map. The modern state of Israel maps uh, you see uh, today are often uh, very much like this, capturing the spirit of Israeli control as well as its effort to dominate nearby occupied territories. The capital, Tel Aviv, and its many interests throughout the region from the north in its border region with Syria to the south near Egypt, and its longstanding rivalry and relationship with Jordan. This is a modern map of the Israeli state, but it hasn't always been this way. This constant conflict can be seen emblematic in a quick case study mention of the Six Day War in 1967. 
and I'll very much simplify it for you. During the 1967 war between Israel and all of its immediate Arab neighbor states, the Israelis were thrown back on their heels in the first few days of the conflict, which included some surprise invasions by their neighbors, but within days rallied to begin to challenge and push back Arab neighbor state interests. In the process of the 1967 Six-Day War, Israel was actually able to expand its control and territorial influence and dominance across key regions, including the Sinai Peninsula, gaining occupation authority over, Israel, over Egypt's Sinai, and in places like the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, as well as what's called the Golan Heights, this high ground region between Israel and Syria. I mentioned the 1967 war because it was also formative in shaping what we understand today to be the modern Israeli occupation of contested regions, including, most significantly, the West Bank, the West Bank of the Jordan River, and the Gaza Strip, this strip of land, this very small space of territory that neighbors on Egypt. Palestinians in Israel primarily live in high concentrations in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip today. The Palestinians in these regions face continued occupation and challenges from Israeli authorities. This is a difficult situation, a difficult situation that has generated a great deal of friction and resentment that has sparked uprising and extremist violence by the Palestinians in several cases, including the historic intifadas, and it remains a boiling point for challenge between Israeli and Palestinian interests. Much of the world has watched and been very concerned about this conflict and challenge for a long time. The United Nations has been critical of Israeli actions in the occupation of these areas, as well as their treatment of Palestinians and human rights concerns. Meanwhile, Arab and Palestinian interests have spoken up, spoken out, raised challenges, including diplomatic and rhetorical challenges, framing the Israeli occupation as apartheid, framing it as discriminatory, and offering challenges in diplomatic venues in the region and around the world, including at the United Nations. Meanwhile, Palestinian groups themselves have taken upon, uh, them, have taken upon themselves the idea of challenging the legitimacy of Israeli occupation. We have to acknowledge the millions of Palestinians and Arabs in the region who have challenged the legitimacy of Israel for decades, and in some cases, used extremist violence in the pursuit of liberty. Now turn to a setup for a feature film for this evening. Paradise Now is a feature film that was released in 2005, directed by Hanu Abu Assad, filmed in Arabic with English subtitles. It was actually filmed on location, covering the lives, fictional but fairly representative lives, of Palestinians, young men frustrated by the ongoing occupation situation, the challenges by the Israeli authorities. This film in 2005 was very powerful when it was released and drew a fairly broad audience. It was nominated for the Best Foreign Language Film Academy Award that year. It did not win, but it was nominated as a very powerful and engaging chance to investigate these things. But I cannot leave you to watch this feature film without strong content warnings, as I usually try to offer. This film is effectively focused on a couple of young men who grow increasingly frustrated by the situation of Israeli occupation and decide to carry out acts of extremist violence. This film gets to the heart of the questions and themes for tonight's class. Extremism in defense of liberty? Is it ever acceptable? Is it ever legitimate? This then focuses on the plight of these young men and their decisions that follow, but it also wrestles with critical issues about the legitimacy of the use of force. Content warning. This film includes graphic images of violence and profanity. This film is heavy, it's powerful, and it addresses very controversial subjects. I want you to know very much outright that this is not a film assignment designed to legitimize or justify extremist violence. 
that I selected this film for this class very carefully and in consultation with a number of College of Worcester officials, including Rabbi Joan Friedman. We believe this film offers a critical and careful investigation of these themes, but it should be viewed with caution and deliberation. I'll now ask you to follow the syllabus guidelines and plan to view the feature film Paradise Now in its entirety. The themes in the film are testable material and they, com uh, they complement very well what we've done in our video lecture setups. I want to thank you for all your attention in reviewing these two lectures, video lecture 9.1 and 9.2. And I wish you the best in viewing this film as always, when in doubt, when questions arise, or when you'd like to react to things you've seen, please feel free to reach out to me by email and or by video chat. Be happy to discuss this further. Thanks for your attention. Good luck.